Greetings from the kitchen for another film of distillation adventures. So the ethos of today's film is to pit the air still pro against a traditional air still, but both of them in pot still mode. Now I've previously done a reflux mode on the air still pro versus pot still mode on the traditional air still film, and the air still pro won hands down, but it wasn't really an even playing field. So today they're both going to be in pot still mode. However, before I can get to doing that, I've got to reduce some tomato paste wash down to some 80% base alcohol. So in here I've got 20 litres of tomato paste wash which has been fermenting for too long. Crikey, I started this on the 4th of April and it's now the 17th of May. We've had some unseasonably cold temperatures in Yorkshire this year, which means that fermentation of the tomato paste wash has taken a bit longer than it would normally do. And if I'm brutally honest, it is actually still technically fermenting a little bit because the bubbler keeps going, but it's on 13.125% at this point in time. So I'm just going to say, let's crack on with it because otherwise I'm going to be waiting forever. Okay, so let's have a look in the bucket. This is a Rich's fermentation bin and they're brilliant. Really recommend them. Such a good tight seal. Oh, there you go. Let's have a look inside. It actually smells gorgeous. I did actually do a dip test with the hydrometer earlier to verify that the gravity was just underneath. 1.000 and I did have a little uh, taster of the hydrometer as it come out and I'm going to say it tasted really good it was like decent dry white wine anyway to my taste buds let's have a look there it is so I'm not bothered about the gunk on top this thing can handle it no problem whatsoever so I'm not going to be fussy about separating things I'm just going to be taking it from there and putting it in here. So the first part of the film today is about taking this 20 litres of wash and reducing it on reflux mode in the Air Still Pro to an 80% base spirit. So I know, having done this before, that if I put four litres at 13% in there, I'll get about 550 mil at 80% out in reflux mode. However, it takes quite a while. In fact, it'll take four to five hours for each four litres. It's a very, very long time. So I'm only going to give you the highlights of the first reflux run today. There's absolutely no point whatsoever in me doing it all. That will be completely boring. So in this first part of the film today, I'm going to reduce it to 80% spirit just once for you. And then I'm going to be repeating, 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 which you won't see. And then in a couple of days time, I'm going to put one air still against the other. Okay, let's crack on. Okay, so this is as simple as taking a jug, hopefully not making a big mess, and transferring into the drum of the Air Still Pro. It smells great. I actually could drink this. And if it wasn't one o'clock in the afternoon, I might be having a cheeky nifter. In fact, if it was a Friday, I probably would. I'm running it at maximum capacity just for efficiency, really, and to get it done as quickly as possible. OK, I've just hit the fill line. That goes back in there. Time to move on. So now I'm going to add a dribble of distilling conditioner into here so it doesn't froth up and out. It never has done before. Fingers crossed it won't do, but this should prevent it from happening anyway, particularly as there's still a little bit of activity going on fermentation wise. OK, so I'm just going to go like that. That's enough. No messing. So now I need to get the top on the Air Still Pro. And this is a job which is slightly more difficult than what it needs to be, just because you've got to line the electrics up on this top unit and on the bass drum. Let's have a look. Yeah, that looks all right to me. Let's press down. Good tight seal. So there's the story so far. So now it's simply a case of taking the kettle lead from the mains electricity and plugging that into there, like so. So this is an Air Still Pro, which I don't own. I've loaned it from those wonderful people at brewathome.shop. They've given me the chance to experiment and play with this. So thank you very much, brewathome.shop. It has been really appreciated that I've had the opportunity to use this. 
So on the Air Still Pro, there is a reflux mode spout just there for it to drip from. And this is the collection vessel which it will take the four shots in. I'm not using a parrot with this. There's absolutely no point. I'm just collecting it straight into the jug because I know because I've done it previously that the average ABV of what comes out of that 500 to 550 mil will be 80% or even more than 80%. Once I've collected all of the spirits, I'll then stick an alcometer in and then I'll know how much I need to dilute it before I rerun it. So I'm collecting straight into this jug and yes, it is plastic, but the alcohol will only be in there for a couple of hours. So no need to comment that I shouldn't use a plastic jug. Right, let's turn on here. And then we turn on here. And then we turn on one more time. So green is reflux mode. If I press that again, it would go purple for pot still mode. Fans kicked in. It'll go off in a second. There we go. And now what's happening is the drum is taking time to warm up. Once it gets to the point that alcohol evaporates, the fan will kick in. It will draw up the vapour, which will cool the big condenser style. The four shots will be collected in here and the rest will drip out of here. So once things have started to drip through, I'll come back to you. See you then. OK, it's a couple of hours later. I've been working. I've just come back to this and you can see that the four shots collection vessel is full and the reflux dripping is going on just nicely. That'll be coming through at well over 80%, probably even 90%. So we'll have a further update when this is finished. Well folks, it's nearly five hours later. I've had a shower, a shave, a haircut and a change of clothes. Feeling fresh. That is still going. Let's have a look at it. So the Air Still Pro is still wearing away. However, I've noticed that dripping has ended and in reflux mode, this has an auto shut off. So I know that soon this will turn itself off. So I'll come back to you. Was it shut off? Oh! I did not plan that. That is unbelievable. Okay, it's just shut off. Amazing. Right, so I can have a look what I've got in the jug. I can measure how much is there and take the alcohol by volume with the alcometer. There's my hydrometer tube with the alcometer already in it. Let's see what ABV this is. Being very gentle. Crikey, it's only just lifted at the last minute. This is a most impressive alcohol by volume. It's on 86% ABV. That's what it's outputted from four litres of 13% tomato paste wash. Wow. So my collected alcohol goes into a demijohn. Oh, it smells intense. It smells like, I mean, it's, I mean, it basically smells like very strong vodka, which essentially is what it is. Incidentally, I forgot to take the physical volume measurement, but looking on the jug, I can see that there is a line at 600 mil. So it's outputted about 600 mil from that. Right, I'll put this to one side. It's time to do the next one. However, for safety reasons, I'm going to let this cool for about half an hour or so before I attempt to take it apart. Now, this bit here that's collected the four shots, I'm going to tip that into a separate bottle and that will be used for fire lighter. As for the rest of this stage of the process, it's exactly what I've just done again, again, and probably again. You don't need to watch that. So once I've collected all of my 80% base spirit, I'll come back to you and then it will be Air Still Pro versus Air Still. Catch you then. <sighs> hey folks, I'm back. It's a few days later and trust me, the reflux mode does take quite a bit of time. Let me show you what I got from it. So this is the net result of 20 litres of 13% tomato paste wash. I reckon I've got three litres of stripped spirit there. Now, as far as what the ABV goes, that's something I'm now going to have to work out. So I'm just giving it a bit of a swish around to ensure that it's properly mixed. And let's get 100 mil into the hydrometer tube. You've got to treat this stuff with respect. It's like petrol, basically. Or gasoline to Americans. So this is my alcometer. I'm going to dip that in there and see where that ends up.
and this is exactly 85% alcohol by volume. So I've got three litres of 85% ABV spirit and that is pretty outstanding. So while the Airsteel Pro does take a bit of time, it does deliver an absolutely fantastic product in reflux mode. So the idea now is for me to take this spirit and to dilute it to less than 40% to run it through the Airstill Pro and the Airstill to make some gin. But in order to do that, I want to create an absolutely level playing field and I want to use exactly the same ingredients in both gins. So let's move to the kitchen and we'll have a look at the ingredients. So I'm going to make a rhubarb and rose petal flavoured gin. So because it's a gin, I need juniper berries. So I'm going to be splitting this between the two air stills. I'm going to be splitting this rhubarb stalk down into little pieces and then into both air stills, equal amount in both. I'm only putting those in the air still. And then once the gin has been produced from the air still, I'm then going to soak the rose petals in it so that that sort of filters out into it and flavours it. Additionally, I'm going to be adding some distilling conditioner into the air still to prevent any boil over. So besides the 85% spirit, they're the only ingredients other than some water and I'm just using straight tap water and that is to dilute the spirit. So these ingredients are going to go straight into the air still drums with the diluted spirit and they're going to sit there for two days before I put the air stills on so the flavours can come out of them and flavour that base spirit. So here's my juniper berries and I'm going to put them inside this coffee grinder and what I want to do is partially grind them so some of them split open. Some of them will stay intact and some of them won't but it just gives different layers of flavour. Okay, the noisy bit. And that's smushed them down nicely. They're not all smushed but most of them are and that's going to mean that a lot of flavour gets released out of them. Now the Airstill Pro has got an inbuilt botanicals basket and I could put these straight into that botanicals basket. However, I'm not going to do that, and that's because I've smushed these down and they're in very fine pieces. And what I don't want to happen is that these get through the filters within the botanical basket and then somehow start circulating around inside the Airstill Pro and clogging it up. Remember, it's not my Airstill, it belongs to brewathome.shop and I don't want to mess up their Airstill. So by putting these in the drum, it's just a safer option. And it's again a level playing field because they will be in the drum in the traditional Airstill as well as in the Airstill Pro. So as far as my rhubarb goes, I've just got to chop this down. So I'm just going to weigh how much rhubarb there is. I've zeroed the scales already. So there's 183 grams of rhubarb, so let's just say 90 grams in each one. So that's 91 grams, and that's 91 grams. Spot on. So we're on an even playing field so far. Now the juniper berries smell absolutely intense. So ginny and so, so floral. Really, really great idea smashing them apart, you know. It does release a lot more flavour. They didn't smell anything like this up to that point. So now it's a case of adding the same amount of juniper berries. I think we're okay with that. So I'm back in the living room and I'm going to put this one into the traditional air still. There you go. And this one into the air still. So now I'm going to put two litres of warm tap water into each of the air stills. It's not hot hot, but it's certainly warm. And already I can tell you the smell is intense. So adding warm water allows an easier extraction of the flavours and the oils from the berries and the rhubarb. So I've got to do exactly the same for the air still pro. I'll come back to you shortly. Okay, so I've got two two litre jugs just here and I want to split this evenly between the two jugs. Okay, these have both got just under 1.6 litres of 86% spirit in there. I'm now going to add these into the air stills. So firstly the traditional air still, and then the pro. And lastly for now, I'm going to add some distilling conditioner into each of the stills. So as far as the traditional air still goes, all I've got to do is put the lid on, and I can leave this now. Just got to connect the power up, make sure it's all connected right. There we go. I'm just going to leave that for now. As far as the Airstill Pro goes though, I've got to do a bit of tinkering. 
So because I'm running the iStill Pro in pot still mode, I've got to make some changes to the setup for it. And this is a bit annoying and I think this is a disadvantage of this machine. So you take the top bit off here, the botanicals basket comes out and inside here are some bits of copper. So before running in pot still mode, you've got to remove all of those. So I'm just gonna have to physically turn it upside down and shake it to get them out. And I can imagine that people are gonna lose these. They're gonna end up going down sinks people are going to misplace them and I, and I just don't think it's a very very good idea that you've manually got to do this. So I'm being honest in my review here and that's that's what I think. Underneath the copper there is some other metals in there and I think I might have to get them out as well. I'm just going to see if they do come out. So I've got more copper, more copper. It would be very easy to not get all these out that's for sure. So that's just come flying out. That's a round bit of metal. No idea what it is. They don't tell you this on the instructions. They don't explain to you. And I'd like to know. It's all well and good being told you've got to remove it, but why? What purpose does it serve? Why can't you tell us that information? This is gonna be a right hassle of a job. So when I've got it all out, I'll come back to you. But it don't come out easy, especially when it's wet. Well, what an absolute ball ache that was. That literally took 15 minutes to get those out of there. When you've used the still and they're wet, they're an absolute pain to get out, but there's no other way to do it once you've used the still because they just stay wet. To me, this is a massive disadvantage of the Air Still Pro. That was just a massively unnecessary faff. If I owned an Air Still Pro, I'd only ever use it in reflux mode, and I would have a normal Air Still for the pot still stuff. So all these I'm going to put to one side, as well as the botanical basket, which I've previously told you I'm not going to be using. So next up, I need to change the nozzle that's in the Air Still. So this is currently the reflux nozzle. I'm just going to take that off. It's unscrewing quite easily um, and you can see it's the reflux one because it's got a letter R on it for reflux. I'm replacing it with an almost identical nozzle which has got a letter P on it for pot still mode. And this should just screw in and it does it screwing in quite nice and easily. But again, will people remember to change the nozzle? I think it's human nature not to remember things like that. And are people going to lose these little nozzles? I just think it's a disadvantage that you've got to do things like that. It could have been designed better. Right, I'm going to put the cap back on the column now, just there. And I'm now ready to put this back on top of the uh, drum or the boiler, as it's actually called. So I've got to get this on top of the still so that the electrics are in alignment. And as you can see, if I turn this round, there's the plug socket just there that this goes into. And you just want to get it so it's slightly to the right of it so you've not got the wire creased up too much like that's a little bit creased for me so i'm just going to spin this around a little bit that's it that's okay and then you want to make sure that there's no seal showing that it's all completely silver there's no white showing just there so that's that's fine that's done so i've got air still pro and i've got traditional air still and within each of these, I've got the diluted spirit, I've got the juniper berries, and I've got the rhubarb. I'm leaving that fruit to macerate in that diluted spirit for 48 hours before I start to run the stills. And I'm going to run them together and take cuts as I do it. Okay, so just one more thing to point out in this segment of film. The diluted spirit is 37.78% in the air still. That was done with some maths but it's below 40%, so therefore that is safe for distillation. Right, I'm leaving this for two days, and then we'll run the stills. See you then. Hey folks, it's 48 hours later, and it's still in day. Let me show you the setup. So I've got on the left the Air Still Pro, and on the right the Air Still. You'll notice that in front of each of them, there is a jug in which I'm going to be collecting what comes out of the stills. In the bottom of this jug is a small container which I'm going to collect the four shots in. This isn't in the air still because in the air still pro 
the four shots will go into the vessel which is built into it. Now I'm doing this in pot still mode and I've already run a reflux so I don't know if I do need to collect four shots or not but at the very least they're going to be heads if they're not four shots so it's fine. I'm going to separate them anyway. After that I've then got bottles on each side. I've got heads, I've got hearts and I've got tails. This is for the normal air still and on the other side I've got the same setup but with a letter P so I don't forget which is which uh, still. So I'm going to turn these on, run the stills and when the liquid starts to drip through I'm literally going to have to do little smells, maybe a little dip test to decide whether I think it's heads, hearts or tails. I'm going on the basis that when it's heads it's a bit acetone a bit like nail varnish remover. When it's hearts it should smell and taste like gin. And when it gets to tails, it's a bit like wet cardboard or damp dog or something like that. That's what I'm going on. That's kind of what my observations have been. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to distinguish that. Now, you'll notice that I'm not using a parrot under either still. And the reason is that within the parrot, I'm concerned that the heads and the hearts and the tails might start to mix together. So no parrot today. Besides that, I've only got one parrot anyway, and I wanted to make this as fair a contest as possible by doing it exactly the same for both of them. Right, I think it's time to move. So, moving around here, I'm going to turn on the Air Still Pro into pot still mode. So you press it once to turn it on, and then you hold the button in until it turns purple for pot still. That's now in pot still mode. And you note the fan comes on to begin with. And then it cuts off. So now the boiler, the drum, is going to be getting up to temperature. And when it's ready, things will start to come through. The fan will kick in automatically. So this is a big advantage of the Air Still Pro that the fan's not running all the time. I like that. ka -ching. Let's move around to the traditional air still where we do not have that luxury it's a straight let's turn it on and there we go the fans now going so these are going to be running for probably four hours or so so I've got four hours of noisy hot fan on a day that's already 20 degrees Celsius outside and it's only about 9 15 in the morning Nevertheless, this should prove to be hopefully a fun experiment and hopefully I'm going to learn a little bit from doing this. So when something happens in terms of liquid dripping through, I'll come back to you. Right, catch you in a bit. Okay, quick update from the Pro. It's just beeped and kicked into life and you can see that the four shots are now collecting in the four shot collection vessel. So it shouldn't be too long before the heads start to appear from there. I've put a little shot glass, a 25mm shot glass in the bottom. I'm going to try and keep it as tidy as possible as I'm doing this. Which is quite often easier said than done, but I'll do what I can. Just moving around the table as yet. With the traditional air still, nothing appearing, although I did hear the boiler starting to make some noises, so I don't think it's going to be too long. So now I've got both fans whirring away. It certainly is quite noisy. And there we go. And that is coming through in a very, very decent stream. It's not going to take long to fill that little 25mm shot glass up. So I've got another one at the ready. What's nice about the Pro is that it's not splashy. It's quite a good directional drop. The normal air still can be quite splashy. Right, I'm going to put this one in, take this one out. And this is now going to be a continual process. Yeah, this is absolute acetone. It really stinks of like nail varnish remover. There's no way I want to drink that. So that is going into heads. We've got the next one coming through. Oh, and just noticed in the traditional air still that the four shots are now starting to collect. And it's missing the vessel that I wanted them to go into, but never mind. I'm going to be busy now, aren't I? Okay, another change of shot glass. Still smells a bit acetone. 
Yeah, still a bit acetony, but actually not as bad as the last one was. So again, heads moving around here. Drip, 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 blob, blob, drip. It certainly comes out at a slower rate from this one, but you can see by the drip, drip splashiness. So the Air Still Pro is definitely tidier. This isn't going to be a relaxing job. I'm going to be on my feet going around from one to the other continuously now for the next couple of hours. I'll come back to you in a bit when I'm moving from heads into hearts on whichever one first. Air Still Pro, I'm on about 100ml now, or 125ml actually this is. And this now smells like it could be hearts, so I'm going to put that one into the hearts bottle. Over here, I've removed the four shots now. And I'm drip drip dripping. Definitely 25ml glasses are too small for this job, you want something a bit bigger. It's all a learning curve though. But I think as I'm on hearts on this one over here now, what I might do is just simply change the collection vessel into the jug and then keep taking a little sample as I go along. Right, so they're now going into that jug and that's all hearts. And I'm just going to have to keep monitoring this because I want to stop it before it gets to tails. I don't want any tails going into the hearts. Traditional air still and... It doesn't smell too bad actually, but I am going to stick it in the heads because it's only the second one out. I think as a learning curve, running them both at the same time like this is a bit like manic if you've got other things that you're meant to be doing, which I'm meant to be doing other things, as well as doing this. So other things have now ground to a halt. So I'm taking this out and I'm putting another one in there. So this is now my third one out of the normal air still. 75 mil. Yeah, I think that's still heads. So that's going in there. Just having a sampler in the Pro. Yeah, it smells ginny. Okay, that can go back in. That's good. If I do any little taste tests, I'm just going to use my finger, I think, because otherwise I'll be on my back. So I'm on the traditional air still. It's lost the acetone smell. I'm on just over 100 mil, I think. I'm going to stick this into hearts. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I think I'm on hearts on here, is change the collection vessels. So I've got the smaller jug in there now. This is all heads that's in here, so that's going to go into the heads one. And now it's a case, again, of monitoring them both, and as soon as I detect that dampness, that cardboardiness, then I know that I'm on tails, and that's it. So I'll collect the tails into the other bottles, but don't mix with the hearts. God, it's a right old job this. Anyway, look, it's just repetitive. It's me going backwards and forwards between them all. You don't need to watch me do all the process. It's going to take me a couple of hours. I'll come back to you in a bit when there's something interesting to report. See you then. So just a quick update. I've filled the first two hearts bottles up and I'm now on to the second ones. Still going smoothly. So I'm well into the second bottle for hearts right now. But I'm just going to have a little snip and taste test. Now it smells fine, absolutely fine. This is out of the Pro. It tastes fine as well, but there's definitely more flavour in it now. Now whether that means I've hit the good part of the heart, or whether that means I'm hitting the end of the, end of the heart and getting towards the tails, I don't know. So I need to monitor that one now. As for the traditional air still, let's do the same thing. I'll just get a few drips. So it smells fine, it smells like it should do. Now these are virtually at the same stage in terms of output, but this one, the traditional Air Still, tastes very different to what I've just pulled out of the Air Still Pro. It smells the same. It's warmer and arguably more flavoursome. Now whether that's down to something to do with the ingredients, I'm not quite sure, but I was expecting them to be identical, uh, and they're not. So that's going to be quite interesting when it comes to seeing the end gin product. Anyway, I'll give you an update in a bit. So this is about 2 hours and 20 minutes altogether into the process, and this is 20 minutes since my last update. 
I've noticed now what's coming through here has got a sweet taste to it and that to me suggests it might be tails. Now it doesn't smell like cardboard or wet dog but the taste isn't like it was. So now I'm collecting into the jug and I'm going to be moving into the tails vessels with what comes out next. So a very slight change of setup now, let me show you what I've done. Because I believe that I'm in the tails and I'm no longer concerned about hearts and tails mixing together, I've put the parrot on there so I can monitor what the ABV is at the point of where I think it's in the tails. Now I don't know how accurate this is going to be, and it is all a learning curve, but it'll be interesting just to see anyway. So once this starts to come through the parrot, I'll come back to you. Okay, so it looks like I was being very premature because this is certainly not tails. It's coming through at 70% according to the alchometer. So I've either gone into the hearts too early and there might be some heads in them, or the other side to it could be that I was getting the higher ABV end of the hearts out first, which didn't have as much flavour. And now I'm into the flavour, and trust me, there is flavour in this, that this is how it should be tasting. Anyway, so I'm going to revert back to going into the hearts and not the tails. So I'm now back collecting into hearts again. And what I've done is I've moved the alchometer over to this side just to see what the ABV is that's currently coming out of the traditional air still. Okay, so I've just put the parrot onto the traditional air still and that's now down at about 55. So yeah, definitely this is still in the good range. So I'm going to leave the parrot on the traditional air still until I see it get to below 30. Then I know that I'm heading into tails territory. Then I'll take it out and then I'm going to go back to sniffing and tasting. Right, catch in a bit. So 10 minutes later and this has already dropped to 50. So this is definitely now going down at a good pace. Over here I'm just about to top up the second air still pro hearts bottle from what's going into there. In fact, I shall do that right now. So just a further update, I've just completed filling Hearts Bottle 2 for the Pro and the Still, and I'm now moving on to 3. Both of these machines are outputting at pretty much an identical rate. Anyway, on 3 hours and 20 minutes, I'm now on 40% on the output from the Air Still. I've just spotted that the Pro seems to be having a little bit of an issue now. And that it's not coming out in a continual stream, it's kind of having to pause a little bit. A bit like an old man going to the loo. I'm just going to have a little sniff and taste of this. Right. Oh my word, it smells absolutely wonderful. That is so rhubarby. That is the best it's smelt so far. My word, that is good. That's absolutely spot on. Perfect. So I've really hit the sweet spot. This is coming out at about 40% ABV now then, if it's running at the same ratio as that one is. And this really is very, very rhubarby. I'm impressed. I think I should try it on the other one as well now. And again, this one smells a lot better than it did before too. This has got a really rhubarb smell to it. Yeah, wow. It tastes absolutely identical. It's very good. So I think a valuable lesson to learn from this is that I've probably been a bit premature with the Hearts bottle and I think I've probably got some heads in there. It's too late for me to do anything about it and I'm going to persist and continue as I am. But I didn't collect a lot of heads there from either of the stills. I mean, that's in a pint, a pint glass bottle. So there's probably, I don't know, maybe 100 mil, 200 mils of heads. And in hindsight, I probably should have collected quite a bit more. But as I said at the beginning, it's the first time I've done this and it is all a huge learning curve, but I'm really appreciating the difference in the smell and the taste as it goes through the process. We'll have a further update in a bit. Okay, so I've got below 30 now on here. So what I'm going to do on this still for a minute is just switch it off so the dripping stops. And I can move things around and then I'm going to go back to going into the jug without having this here. 
on the other side this is still coming through in intermittent dribbles so I imagine that I'm getting down uh, to a lower percentage there too also. So I've now put this air still back on I'm just going to put the nozzle attachment in just for tidiness. Now this is what has come out of the Parrot and it smells absolutely delightful it's like garden salad it's so rhubarby it's unreal I dip my finger in have a little test delicious really good so this has really been the best bit of the hearts I think so I'm just getting a bit more out of the pro just want to see what this is like Again, it smells gorgeous. It's so rhubarby. It's rhubarby, it's ginny. There's even a little bit of a pepperiness there, which has probably come from the juniper berries. It's really good. So I still want to continue collecting this. Okay, so I've just put this back onto the Air Still Pro because I just want to monitor what's coming out of there ABV wise, particularly as it is struggling to produce output now. So I'm curious as to see what is coming out of there. Okay, so just a bit more of an update now. Just going to the original air still. I'm just collecting a few drips in a plastic shot glass. Okay. The smell of rhubarb is definitely there. But I'm now feeling like that smell is beginning to deteriorate. Taste-wise, it seems more watery and that there's something else there. So what I think I'm going to do is swap over because I could well be into tails now. It smells very good what's in the jug but it was just that last bit that I had there. I'm just not sure it's as good as it was. So I'm going to pop this one into hearts. I'm definitely below 30% now what's coming here anyway so I'm not far off the tails zone and if I was doing it from the parrot out right all the way I would have stopped it dead just, just below 20 anyway. So I'm going to assume that what's coming out of here now is tails and I'm not going to collect anything else from the normal air still for hearts. That's over. Everything that comes out of there now is going into tails. So I've collected essentially two and a half 750ml bottles of hearts. Going back to the Pro, I've put the Parrot on it and I just want to see where I am in terms of what's coming through and I'm just waiting for that to rise because it's coming through very intermittently. So I'm just looking at the Parrot on this one now and I can see that that is definitely below 20% so anything that's coming out of here now is going to be tails so I'm not putting that into the hearts at all. So I've got the tails bottle directly on the Parrot and I'm just going to leave it there now. So I've outputted from the Pro slightly less than I have done from the uh, traditional air still but there's not an awful lot in it. So I'll gather tails for another 15-20 minutes and then I'm switching off and that's it. Okay I'm solidly into tails now that's hit below 10% so I'm switching off so this one physical switch just there and around here just here. Now for safety's sakes, I need to leave the air stills to cool. I'll come back to you in a bit. Okay, so I've moved into the kitchen to progress. Just in case I start to make any mess and splash and things like that. So here are the heads and tails and you'll see that that's the heads from the Pro and that's the heads from the traditional air still. And if I put them next to each other, that's almost identical. I'd say I've taken slightly more heads out of the traditional air still. Now I suspect that there are some heads in the first bottle of hearts that I've got just here, mainly because I wasn't 100% sure about what I was doing. Remember, I was doing it on smell and taste. I'm not an expert, but I was having a go. So it is highly likely that in this bottle there's some heads and in this bottle there's some tails. I'm hoping the middle one is the purest of the three but we'll come to those in a minute. Before we come to the good stuff let's go to the tails. So we've just looked at the heads together. Let's look at the tails together. So this time I seem to have slightly more tails in the Pro than in the traditional air still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the alchometer if I've got enough of this stuff to see what the ABV of the heads and tails are. 
And then as I do that, I'll write it onto the yellow labels on the bottles. So starting with the heads from the Airstill Pro, I've got less than 100 mil, which I have actually. I don't think I'm going to get the alcometer to work. But I'll see if it will, but I don't think I will. I've got, um, I would say, 74 mil of heads there. And no, the alcometer's sitting on the bottom, so it's not telling me anything because it won't give an accurate reading. But what I can do is combine the heads from the Airstill Pro and the Airstill to get it above the magic 100 mil. And now this should tell me what the combined ABV of the heads from both of them is. I mean, this is going to go back in for a reflux run incidentally, but it's telling me that the combined ABV of what I've taken out as heads is actually 85% ABV from both of them. That's fairly impressive stuff. So the heads aren't going to get wasted. They, along with the tails and some other bits and bobs that I've got lying around, are going to go back into the Airstill Pro and I'm going to run them through just to strip out the good, the good part of the alcohol. Now, I'm not putting that in this film, I'm just letting you know that's what I'm doing. Let's have a look at the tails. Tails never fails. So here's the tails from the Airstill Pro. Hopefully I've got enough. Yeah, should have them there. And the combined tails from the Airstill Pro. See how buoyant that is. Actually, that's only showing us 10%, which is nothing. So I've probably gone too far. So there's very likely to be tails in this just here. So let's have a look at the traditional air still and see what those tails come out at. And again, they're coming out at 10% also. So I've got 10% tails. So I've probably got between 10 and 20% tails that's now in the hearts. But I'm not going to worry too much about it because at least I've stripped out the worst of the heads and the worst of the tails. So hopefully the worst burniness and the worst damp dogness has gone from what will be the final product. So what I'm going to do with all of my heads and tails now is put them in one vessel together because as I said I'm going to run all these through the Airstill Pro on reflux mode. So I'm going to put the combined heads and tails now in here. Is actually 38% ABV. So that's good to go back in on reflux mode to strip out the good bits from it. So now let's look at what I've called hearts, which like I said before has got a little bit of heads in and a little bit of tails in, but we'll not worry too much about it. So I'm starting with the Airstill Pro and this is the first bottle out that I called hearts. It doesn't smell as good as what came out later. Now I'm smelling that again. There is a slight acetoneness to it so there is heads in there I'm just gonna to have to fess up to that there is heads in there I'm not an expert it's all a learning curve next time I'll do it better so I'm going to dip this in and it's touching the bottom so it's not accurate so I need to just tip a bit more liquid in so what came out as hearts one is actually 83% ABV, pretty high. So let's have a look at Airstill Pro Hearts 2. Now this one definitely smells more ginny or vodka -y, and the acetone smell isn't as apparent at all. Let's see what the ABV of this one is. It's exactly 65% ABV so we've gone from 83 to 65. Right let's have a look at Airstill Pro Hearts 3. So this is not a full bottle by any means. It smells good. The rhubarbiness and the ginness is there. Anyway Hearts 3 is exactly to the number 20% ABV. So I'm now going to do the first of the hearts bottles from the traditional air still. It does smell slightly different to the other one, to the first hearts one. There is definitely more of a fruity smell in this one. See what the ABV of this one is. And it's touching the bottom, so I need to top it up. I suspect it's going to be plus 80. And it is, in fact, bang on 
80% ABV. Let's have a look at hearts two. Here we go. And hearts two is on exactly 65, which is the same as hearts two from the Pro. And this one smells good. This one smells really ginny, sort of vodka -y as well. I'm not getting any acetone. Yeah, it smells good. And finally, hearts three. Let's get that one in here. Hearts three on the original air still is actually 30% ABV. That's much more than I expected. So let's have a look at what I've got here. So just looking at the face of the hearts numbers that I've got on the bottles, I'm not going into measurements and breaking it down that much, but on the face of it, the hearts from the Pro average at 56%, but the hearts from the original air still average at 58%. So I think in pot still mode, from what I've seen so far, the original air still is really standing up for itself. So what I'm going to do now is take my Pro, mix them together in this demijohn, and then take what I've got out of the normal air still, mix them together in this demijohn. So I've still got the Pro in one demijohn and the traditional air still in another demijohn. I'll come back to you when these are filled up. Right, so this is my air still Pro. And I'm just giving this a swish around to mix all these together. So the Air Still Pro Combined Hearts is 70% ABV. That's a lot and I need to water that down. Now let's look at the traditional Air Still Combined Hearts. And this is actually very, very slightly less, which is interesting. It's Bang on 65. I thought that were going to be a little bit higher. So this, so the traditional Air Still Combined Hearts is 65. The Air Still Pro Combined Hearts is 70. Okay, both still very strong. Both still need reducing. So everything that's in here and there in the heads and tails bottle is what has been taken out of the two stills. So there should be a lot less liquid inside them. Let's have a look in them now and see what's left in there. So it's been well over an hour, so the traditional air still, I'm just disconnecting the power and I've got to get the lid off and it twists and that has lifted off with good ease. Oh, it's like a, a rhubarb gin bath. Oh, it's nice, steamy. So that is what is left in there. It's way down from what it was. It wasn't quite at the full four litre mark before. It was a little bit beneath it. It was on three and a half litres, but that is uh, quite a reduction. So before I can get into the Air Still Pro, I need to take the Four Shots collection vessel off. So I'm just putting a bit of tissue underneath it because it always drips and leaks. And with this being basically petrol, you don't want this going all over your kitchen. So power cable out and disconnect the other cable because there's two cables to disconnect. Right. Oh, is it going to come off as easy as the other one did? It, it is moving. Absolutely a pain to get off. It's nowhere near as easy as the traditional air still. It's a major disadvantage of the Pro. And from a safety perspective, because what's so hot in here, this could have been better designed. You know when you buy a pressure cooker, there's a release valve so you can release the pressure before you open it. Why don't they do something like that on here? Because it's vacuum sealed. It just needs something where you press a button in and it equalises the pressure and then it should come off. I wonder if taking the reflux collar cap off might have an impact. Let's see. I'm not exaggerating this by the way, it really is a pain to get off. I'm a big guy and I'm struggling. No, this is not, this is a poor design this still spirits. If you ever do watch other people's reviews, you need to sort this out on the next design of this because it's pretty rubbish. I shouldn't have to struggle like this. <sighs> right, you can see I'm struggling. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not acting. There's no point in you watching three minutes of me struggle. I'll come back to you when I've got it off. I'll talk you through the story when I do. Okay, employing the twist and lift technique, it did eventually pop and it made me jump as well because it came all of a sudden. Oh, so there's stuff dribbling out of this all over the kitchen floor. <laughs> Right, I just want to point something out to you. So this is the underneath of the Airstill Pro. This is after 
two tomato paste washers, it's discoloured to this colour. I'm going to compare this to the original air still. This is the original air still one. This is still completely white and this has had numerous tomato paste washers through it. So again, in the design of that, there's something there which could be fixed and done better. Because I don't think that level of discoloration after two washers is acceptable personally. Once again, it is a delicious rhubarb gin bath. So what I'm going to do with the heads and tails and what I'm going to do with what's left in here is run it through the Airstyle Pro in reflux mode just to extract the vodka, basically. That isn't going in this film, but I'm just explaining that that's what I'm going to do with that so nothing gets wasted. Anyway, I'm going to get that going and then I'll come back to you with the rest of this film. Pro tip for when you're putting this back in reflux mode, get yourself a big long funnel. It makes your life a lot easier. And the green is reflux mode and I'm just leaving this now to do its thing. It'll kick into the fan in a second and then that will go off. And dripping will commence in about an hour's time. Once this has completely finished its cycle, I'll come back to you and show you what I've got. Okay, so back to my 70 and 65% spirits from the Airstill Pro and the Airstill Original. And I need to measure how much of this I've got so I can work out the dilution percentage. I'm on exactly 1.7 litres at 70% ABV. So with the original air still, so with the original air still, I'm on what looks like 1,850 mil at 65% ABV. And just as an update from the Air Still Pro, it's produced about 150ml at 80% ABV from what was left in there. So I'm going to double that in physical volume with spring water and that'll give me about 300ml of 40% vodka. Now let's get back to these two bad boys. Okay, so I've got these two here at 70% and 65%. I need to add spring water and dilute them down to 45%. So I'm going for a slightly overproof spirit, not 40, 45, just that little bit more exciting. However, today my brain isn't up to the job of working out how much water to put in there. Thankfully, there's a website that can do it for you. Let me show you. So if you Google search alcohol dilution calculator, then this should appear in your search results, and this is a really handy website. So this Demijohn has 70% proof spirit at 1.7 litres by volume. So if I put in alcohol before dilution is 70, I want it to be 45%. And the amount that I've got here at the minute is 1.7 litres. If I click calculate result, that tells me that I need to add 0.4 litres of water and I'll end up with 2.64 litres of alcohol with 45% ABV. Got to love a bit of artificial intelligence, haven't you? So I need 0.94 litres. So I'm using spring water, by the way, because I don't like the fact that our tap water around here is chlorine. And I think it taints things flavour-wise. That's 940 millilitres, not litres, 0.94 litres, okay? I'll simply pour that in here very gently, not spilling any on my laptop. Now that's gone a bit cloudy like pastis. It's the effect I mentioned earlier. I'm not going to worry about it because I haven't finished with it yet. But I'm going to put the airlock back in. Now I need to calculate this in exactly the same way. So the other Demijohn, before dilution, is 65%. After dilution, I want it at 45%. And I've got 1.875 litres of spirit. Calculate result. I need to add virtually the same 0.83 litres of water. It's exactly the same as before, so I'll do that and come back to you. So I've added the water into the original air still one and that's now gone cloudy too. However, the one that the pro stuff is in has now cleared. So there are my two 45% gins 
but it's not finished yet because this was going to be a rhubarb and rose flavoured gin. The rhubarb went into the drum and that's come through with the juniper berries. The rose I'm now infusing. So my rose petals are Sofra Damask Rose Petals. This packet was £1.59, bought on Stevenage High Street uh, from the Turkish supermarket. It's a brilliant supermarket. If you're ever in Stevenage Old Town, I recommend it. There's so many interesting little things you can buy in there which add flavours to your brews. Anyway, I'm going to split this down the middle, put half in this one and half in this one. So I've just weighed these out and there's 11 grams in there and 11 grams in there, but that's actually only half the packet. I'm going to save this because I think this is quite pungent. I've had a smell at it and I think I'd be overpowering if I put any more than that in. So in order to extract the most flavour that I can out of the rose petals, I'm going to break them down even further. And what I've got now is 11 grams of rose powder. Oh wow, that is like Turkish delight. That is delicious. So this is going to go through a funnel into here. So that goes out, that goes in, and then I'm pouring this into the gin. Airlock back in. The airlock is only to keep contaminants out. And then I'm going to give this a swirl around. Now, this is going to make a really cloudy and potentially dirty liquid. Don't worry because this is going to be filtered with a coffee filter. It will come out clear, but hopefully with a nice pink tinge. Okay, that looks good to me. I've got to do exactly the same with the other one. So when I've done that, I'll come back to you. And there they are, steeping in rose petals. So that's it for this segment of the film. I'm going to leave these somewhere dark and cool for five days just to infuse and do their thing. After I've done that, then I'll be making the next part of the film in which I'll be filtering it and bottling it. Okay, I've now got the wonderful job of having to wrestle the lid off this and clean this out before I return it to the wonderful people at brewerhome.shop. Right, catch you on the next segment of film, folks. Good evening from the kitchen, folks. Let's have a look at that gin. Okay, this is five days later. As I said, I was going to leave it for five days. This is the Pro. This is the normal air still. You can see that the gin has cleared lovely, but obviously it's going to end up with bits and bobs in it. So I'm going to need to filter this. I may end up double filtering it once with a normal filter and then once with a filter and a filter paper. But before I go to doing that, I'm going to see if the normal filter will work first. Now, if you're British and of a certain age, then you'll probably recognise the receptacle that I'm going to be filtering into as being a glass quality sweets jar. This is probably from the 1980s. Now, in the top of the jar, I've got a funnel and in that funnel, I've got a filter. That's my initial filter and I borrowed it from my coffee machine just up there because it works a treat. And obviously, I've cleaned it out first because I don't want it to taste like coffee. So I'm starting with the Airstill Pro and I'm just going to pour and hope for the best. And it's going through an absolute treat. Now all the sludgy stuff's coming out in the bottom. So that doesn't look too bad underneath, but a little bit of cloudiness has gone through. So I think I will second filter this. And that in the top there is all the rose petals that went through the blender. Okay, I'm, I'm happy enough I've squeezed out what I'm gonna get from that. Oh, no, nope, we get a little bit more coming, so I better wait a minute. All right, let's have a look at what I've got. Okay, it doesn't look bad, but there's definitely some haziness in there, and you can see that there's micro sediment. So I am going to refilter this with a filter paper. But before I do that, I want to get that back into here. So I need to wash this out and then, then get that back into here before moving on to this one. I'll come back to you shortly. Okay, a slight change of plan. Before I move on to this one, I'm going to pour this one back into there and do the second filter at the same time. So I've put a filter paper in. Again, it's just out of my coffee machine. And I've done this many times with spirits and it's worked well every time. Just got to be a little bit careful about throwing it in there. I've made a little bit of a boo-boo because I should have put the filter paper back inside this first. So I'll do that there. 
and that way it does come out quite a bit faster. So you can see what's happening. I'll come back to you when I've got all that lot in there. So just as an update, the pot still one is nearly done. It's coming through lovely and clear, as you can see. And I found another filter and funnel, so I'm now doing the other one also. I'll come back to you when they're both done. Okay, so this is now filtered and you can see how absolutely beautifully clear they both are. Now I'm going to leave these for another five days. This time I'm leaving them like this, so no airlock. And I'm wanting the vapours from the worst of the heads that's in there to hopefully begin to evaporate off a little bit. So I'm going to put these back into my office like that for five more days and then we'll bottle. See you in five days time. Hey folks, it's five days later and today is rhubarb and rose gin bottling day. It looks more like a whiskey, but let's have a look at it. And you will see that from the Air Still Pro and from the standard Air Still that it is lovely and clear. I'm not going to need any further filtering. I don't need to siphon it. I can just pour and I'm pouring from those two demijohns into a selection of bottles and I'm going to separate the ones which have got the Pro Gin in to the standard Air Still Gin in. So I'm using a mixture of wine and spirit bottles. They're fine. And I'm just going to pour through a funnel. There we go. Now I'm probably going to end up with one bottle which is going to have a mixture in, and I don't mind that. As long as I've got some distinct bottles where I can compare the end products. And bottle number two for the Pro. And finally, bottle number three. And in fact, I am going to manage to fill three bottles exactly. I wasn't expecting that. That's just worked out nice. So as far as these three bottles for the Pro goes, it's just a case of getting the lids on. There's absolutely no danger of fermentation taking place, by the way. That's long, long gone. Okay, three down, probably three to go. So moving on to the standard air still. The ye olde traditional air still in this goes. And there's bottle number one. And finally bottle number three. So that's three down and in fact because I've got a little bit left in each of these, actually I am going to just do a little extra bottle. So this small Drambuie bottle is going to have a mixture in, but that's fine. I won't be testing that one when it comes to trying them out. So I'll just put a bit in from each. Okay, that part of the process is done, but I've neglected to do something. Before putting the lids on, I need to add some vegetable glycerin, and the vegetable glycerin just smooths that flavour out a little bit. Each of these bottles will get about three drips in there. I'll demonstrate that using this bottle. Here's my vegetable glycerin. You can just buy this online or in vape shops and lots of other places. So, in terms of drips, I don't want it to put too much in. I'll hold this up so you can see on the camera. And one, two, three, that'll do. And I, if I push that towards the camera, you might just see that f sinking to the bottom. Okay, I've got to do that for all of them. I'll come back to you in a sec. Okay, that job is done and here they all are. So I've got three bottles. These are 700 ml bottles of Pro and that's 45% ABV with the P for Pro just there. So I know which one this is. Next to that I've got the rhubarb and rose gin uh, just out of the normal air still and then that's the bottle where I've got a bit of a mixture together. It's not a full one this one but it's just so I don't forget that that's the mix. I'm going to leave these for one week and then I'm going to open and taste and compare. Catch you then. Good evening.
tuning in from the kitchen folks. It's been a month and I think it's time that we sampled that gin and see how it is. So here it is on the left the original Air Still and on the right the Air Still Pro. I'm going to try the gins neat and then I'm going to add some tonic water. I need to stress to you that I do not like neat gin and I would never normally drink it. However for the purposes of this film and the advancement of mankind I'm going to put myself in a position where I am sampling it and I will try and be as objective in my description as possible. If I pull a face it's because I don't really like it. Okay it doesn't mean to say that it's bad. So here from the original air still. I love that sound. Right so I'm just going to pour a bit into a glass. Okay just there. And now from the Air Still Pro. Right, so here are both gins. I've got roughly the same measure of each. This is from the original Air Still. In terms of smell, it doesn't have a lot of smell. I'm possibly detecting a little bit of heads in there, but I'm not quite sure. Let's try the Pro. I'm getting virtually no smell at all from this one. If anything, it's a bit a slightly vodkery maybe, but I would never have guessed either were gin from the smell. Okay. Right, let's have a little sample of the original air still one. So if I pull a face, bear in mind it's because I'm not really into this. Whoa! Do you know what it tastes of? Don't ask me why or how. It tastes like tequila. It looks a bit like uh, that Jose Cuervo gold one as well, doesn't it? God, if you'd given me that and told me it was tequila, I would have believed you. Tequila Mockingbird. Whew. Now, that has got a bit of a burn but nothing excessive and it's certainly better than when I've uh, not taken cuts. In the past my air still technique uh, wasn't quite as advanced as what it is now and I don't think I'm particularly advanced at this stage. I'm still very much a learner and a newbie but I'm definitely better than what I was. Um, I would say that that is acceptable as a spirit. It doesn't certainly doesn't taste acetone at all. I thought on the smell I was getting a bit of heads but Flavour wise, I think that is reasonable as a 45% spirit. Is it identifiable as a gin? Jury's out. Okay, I'm going to have a look at the Air Still Pro one now. Again, it doesn't taste like gin, but for a spirit, it doesn't taste bad either. I'm somewhere in between tequila and whiskey. It's weird. Honestly, giving me those blind, I would never have guessed either were gin, ever. So maybe I need to put more juniper berries in. That's possibly... Um, something that I should focus on next time or maybe it would be better steeped in the juniper berries rather than putting them in the air still. I'm going to add a bit of tonic to each now and see how that uh, develops the flavour. So just a splash but I'll probably just put the same amount in as what I've just done. Maybe a tiny bit more. If I was drinking gin in a normal environment it would be with tonic lemonade, bitter lemon or ginger ale uh, usually. I prefer it with lemonade of anything to be quite honest. I know somebody that drinks gin and coca-cola and I find that really weird but each to their own. <laughs> Definitely better with a mixer. It's more palatable. I still want to guess gin. Now it's somewhere in between vodka and tequila. So this is the one from the traditional air still is now somewhere in between vodka and tequila taste wise. Definitely drinkable though. You know, if that was done in a tall glass, 
chuck a few ice cubes in and a slice of lemon or lime. Bob's your uncle. It'd be fine. I'd be able to drink that. So let's have a look at the Pro with the tonic. I think that might have slightly more flavour, but that could be as a result of how much tonic I've just put in as well. I might have not put exactly the same amount in there. The flavours are very, very similar. Let me just do them side by side. So, normal air still. Followed by the Pro. The Pro one is very, very slightly better tasting. That's for want of a better word. I can't think of a better word. Maybe it's because it's got a leaning towards a whiskey-ish flavour and I prefer whiskey. I'm not a tequila fan, so maybe that's why I'm leaning that way. I don't think the quality of the product from the Pro or the original Air Still is really any different. I think they're both very similar. So in terms of a final reflection, in pot still mode, I cannot say that either Air Still has particularly outperformed the other in what it's produced in the end. I think they're both reasonable as spirits. They don't exactly taste like the spirit they were intended to be, but they do definitely taste like some sort of spirit, and neither of them taste bad. Neither of them has got that horrible acetone headsness to it. I thought I was going to get that with the original one, but it's not there when you taste it. So all in all, if you're looking to distill in pot still mode, I think the original Air Still absolutely stands up for itself next to the Air Still Pro. And I'm going to be completely honest with you, if I owned an Air Still Pro, I would only ever use it in reflux mode. I wouldn't use it in pot still mode. I can't see the point. And it's too much hassle taking all that stuff out of it and swapping the nozzle over and all that sort of stuff. Both Air Stills are decent bits of kit. Try for yourself. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. There are plenty of other stills out there on the market. I've not yet had a chance to try them, but hopefully one day I will. So once again, folks, I'd like to thank you very, very much for watching this to this stage, for sticking with me with the channel. I really appreciate it. Please feel free to leave me comments. Watch the footer at the end. Get all my other socials. If you'd like to subscribe or follow, please do so. And if you do so, send me a message to say that you saw it on my YouTube. I'll give you a follow back. I'd like to finally say a huge, huge, huge thank you to the brilliant people at brewathome.shop who've allowed me to borrow their Air Still Pro for a very long time, probably two months longer than what I should have done. Thank you very much, fellas. It's hugely, hugely appreciated. I will be returning it to you this week. And to yourselves and everybody else, I'd just like to say a double cheers. Cheers, folks. Catch you on the next film, whatever that may be. Well, I did say it'd be a double cheers. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the Home and Garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or type in www.mosstravel.tv Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden, and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. 
once again thank you very much for supporting my channel for watching my films I do appreciate it I'd just like you all to have a great day